I am a huge fan of our guest here today. In some ways, she's a part of the genesis of the meaning movement. Emmy was one of my first clients I ever worked with one-on-one -on -one many, many years ago. You'll get to hear some of that story in this interview. Since she's continued her journey, has taken her to just some extraordinary places all over the world. Emmy Matsushita holds a master's degree in dance science. She's a creative director, producer, mover, and creative catalyst and coach. She's also a mother, a wife, and an old friend and an inspiration to me. She's passionate at helping fellow freelance dancers make money and build a business around their passions. As I said, Emmy and I go way back. It was around 12 years ago at the time of this recording that we worked together. And I'm just so so excited to just get a chance to share some part of her journey with you here today of finding her passions and expanding it to really letting it be a mission for her in her life and how her story of her relationship with dance and how it became a calling that she now helps other people also live into. So let's get into it. This of course is the Meaning Movement Podcast, a show that helps high performers reclaim their lives, reconnect to themselves and their work, to stop running on empty, avoid burnout, and build a life that they love. If that sounds good to you, you're in the right place. I'm your host, Dan Cumberland, today with guest Emmy Matsushita. Stay with us. There's a big problem that's changing everything about the world as we know it. Carbon and the impact of humans on the earth. We talk about it with words like climate change and global warming. But there's just two really important things that you need to know about it. First, this is an overwhelmingly big problem. So much so that it's likely that you feel as though your choices don't matter in the face of it. Second, that overwhelming feeling that I just mentioned, it's intentional. It was put there by design. The industries that make the biggest environmental impact have a vested interest in you feeling overwhelmed and powerless. They've marketed, lobbied, and schemed to create that feeling in all of us. In short, we've been lied to. But here's the good news. There's a lot you can do to make a difference. And the other good news is that there's still Time. The Carbon Almanac is a book and project about these problems and what we can do to solve them. It was created and run by volunteers on the premise that it's not too late, but none of us can fix this problem on our own. We need each other. There are many ways to get involved, but simply learning more is a great start. Here are three steps you can take. First, go to thecarbonalmanac.org and sign up for the Daily Difference emails. They give you a short thought and a practical action that you can take alongside thousands of others every day. Second, get the Carbon Almanac book. It's full of facts, articles, graphs, and art. It's beautiful and fun to engage with. It's all footnoted and fact-checked. And importantly, it's made by volunteers whose only agenda is to solve these systemic issues. You can find it wherever books are sold. Finally, since you're listening to a podcast, search for the Carbon Almanac wherever you're listening. You'll find the Carbon Almanac podcast network and a few shows featuring expert insight, discussion, inspiration, and ways to take action. There's there's even a show just for kids. Do what appeals to you. Just do something. There's still time to make a huge difference in the future of the planet, but we can't solve this on our own. Join us. Emmy, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to the Meaning Movement Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here with me. I'm excited too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this conversation is a long time coming. Um, and so it's just really, really great. Uh, you're, you're like an OG of the, the meaning movement. Um, so this is really, really special for me. Um, so the, we'll, and we'll get into all of that. But the question that I like to start with is, how do you begin to talk about the work that you do? Oh, man. Yeah, that is such a dense question to answer because it's hard to compartmentalize myself, especially as a creative my energies are all over the place. But to keep it in simple terms, the work that I do currently is creative, well, coaching for creatives, specifically freelance dancers. I help them make money and make a business that's sustainable for their creative life. 
So that's the I short answer. <laughs> I love it. That is so so great, and it's so fun to see you doing that. So let let's just zoom out, because um, yeah. I, I know I know uh, you know uh, uh, some of the story, um, but mm -hmm. like let's just start with dance. Like tell me, tell, mm -hmm. let's talk about the your 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 relationship. Tell me about your relationship with dance. Oh man, a dance. Honestly, like the more I'm interviewed and the more I get to talk about it, like the more I realize how, how impactful it has been for me. Initially, it just started as something that was just an outlet for fun. And I was always like a natural mover. But then um, once I started like doing it more intensely in like a, a formatted way, I started dancing on a dance team. And so that gave me structure and foundations and whatnot. Um, yeah, it, I felt myself really coming into my own and kind of contrasting that to like my traumatic childhood, I just had a lot of chaos in my life when I was younger. And so that outlet to me became kind of like my sanctuary, a space mm. where I could actually take up space and express. Um, and, and so I knew that like in my body as I was dancing, but I didn't really make that mental connection until I really dove in deeper into dance. So I became exposed to hip hop in college and that kind of changed, blew my mind, basically. I was like, oh, wow, I don't have to just replicate moves anymore, which is like the standard path of a lot of dancers. You learn choreography, yeah. you learn the right techniques, blah, blah, blah. Um, but hip hop showed me that it was a raw form of expression. And there was like mm -hmm. a whole community and culture around it. And that just kind of like set me on a totally different track where I was like, there's so much more to this art form and this practice. Yes. Um, yes. And then for me personally, it helped me through a really difficult transitional time. Um, you know, with my divorce, I had to reinvent myself. And I found that I gravitated towards dance to be like, what is my identity now as a, as a yeah. newly single female in this world um, with great aspirations, no less. And so, yeah, dance has really just been kind of my buddy this whole time. Your buddy. <laughs> so, this is such a good yeah. way to think about it. I love it. Yeah. Your buddy, your buddy keeping you company. So when you were yeah. in your younger years before, before finding hip hop, like what, what styles, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not that familiar with dance. I, yes. You're, you're one of my main connections. I have a few other, some, some other clients. Oddly, I end up working with that, you know, I've worked with a, a handful of, of dancers, um, mm -hmm. but but only like secondhand. Like I should actually go to a dance class and like, uh, yeah. especially now that I have kids, I should take my kids to dance. They would love that. Yeah. Um, yes. But but tell me about you know like how, like what styles were you doing before before hip hop? Mm -hmm. Um. So basically, I started out doing jazz, funk, and palms because that was kind of like the competition yeah. format a, for accessible. dance teams at the time. Yeah. yeah exactly. So that was yeah. very. Yeah. yeah, structured, we'll say. I love it. I love it. And I feel like when we, you know, and so just, just for, for listeners, like you were one of, you know, one of, one of the first, you know, coaching clients, I guess we can call it that, that I had, yeah. you know, with, with the meaning movement, like 12 mm -hmm. plus years ago, um, mm -hmm. which is wild. Um, thank you again for trusting me to walk with you through that stage of your life, because it was such a a gift. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I'm curious, just, to, I mean, I, don't, I, th I think it'd be really interesting to maybe kind of revisit that. Like I, w what I was going to say about it is like, I felt like at that time, your relationship with dance was, I, I don't know, it, it felt like, it feels like um, it was emerging as like m maybe a significant, maybe, maybe it was, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So maybe, maybe mm -hmm. like, I'd love to have you tell, tell that portion of that story of like, coming to coming to like maybe hold, grab on to grab onto your buddy and, yeah. <laughs> and let that buddy take you somewhere I don't know yeah. yeah yeah I mean honestly like you said like that point in my life I did not connect in my brain and body that like dance yeah. was so significant to me and so mm. powerful but at the same time that we were doing the work together I was seeing it firsthand because I was yeah. um, blessed to start my own performance team basically a hip-hop crew and I was seeing the transformation in them, yeah. but it didn't really like connect that. I was like, oh, I'm going through transformation too. And like dance is like my medicine, you know, my, my yeah. everything, my therapy, my everything. Yes. Um, and so like, yeah, the, honestly, the, the work that we did together was so pivotal for me because it really, mm. you challenged me to like dig in deeper and give mm. me that space to explore that more. Yeah. Um, and granted, it took many, many years to get to where I am now with like ebbs yeah. and flows with my relationship with dance. But but that was like the catalyst, I want to say. I want to yeah. say that was like wow. a, a marked moment in my life. 
So mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> it, you you were doing it. I was just I just got to call it out. I just got to point. Oh. I just got to point you point point you in the direction along the way. Hopefully, accelerate the process. But it is a long process, yes. right? And I feel like that's what's yes. so frustrating. Um, yeah. And I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of people come to this work, this deeper work of what is my work in the world and what's the contribution I want to have, and like we want mm -hmm. it solved like like a snap, you know, like fast. Yep. We want it like okay, give me the answer and then let let's go. Um, but I feel like it's kind of like. Uh, I don't know, uh, 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 like a bait and switch of sorts, like <laughs> mm. uh, that, like what I really w want and always am inviting people to is a process and a transition yes. that like, like a, a reframing of how you think about yourself and your work and that like embracing that it is a journey. And um, so it's been so fun to see you on your journey and just it feels like you've you've come so, yeah, you've come so far and I can't take any credit for it. So, um, oh. you know. Good Thank on you. you. Good on you. <laughs> thank you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like well, to give let's... credit where credit is due, too. So well, I appreciate you. the space that you held for me because that's necessary. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let's um, let's just for listeners kind of narrate some of like, you know, mm. professionally, what has like that your trajectory been from from that point or, you know, starting whenever. But I think, you know, mm -hmm. people are always thinking, you know, well, I think it's really helpful to hear how other people navigate decisions about yeah. what am I going to do next? How am I going to manifest, you know, not in like the woo woo, like, you know, um, mm -hmm. manifest, but like actually bring to life. Maybe that's a better way to, mm -hmm. to put it. Yeah. Bring to life our desires, the direction that we want to go, the work that we want to do. And it can, you know, it can be a little bit of a winding road. Um, and so, yeah. you know, how, how has the road wound <laughs> for you <laughs> oh man it was super windy um yeah so basically like once we started doing our work together and i realized light bulb moment that like dance is something that i want to revisit because basically yeah. when i was younger i made a decision to do a very safe route study science i thought i was going to be a dentist blah 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 it didn't work out right because that's not what i really wanted to do with my life that the mm -hmm. impact that i wanted to make um, and so once I realized, okay, dance is, is not just my buddy, it's like a tool. I was like really key honed in on pursuing it more. So developing more technical training in it. And so that's when mm -hmm. I applied to schools, but being a mature student, there weren't any schools friendly to dancers of my age, um, to go back into full-time training. And so that took me abroad. Um, and then that journey basically was also super dynamic. I started training in a um, an urban dance program, um, an undergrad program basically in London. Um, and then I realized after a year, even though I loved it so much, I loved being in that space. I realized that I need I needed to level up myself. I couldn't just like have another bachelor's degree under my belt. Like yeah. money wise, it didn't it wasn't a smart investment, I guess. Um, and so I ended up switching majors to a master's program in dance science. Mm. And that was actually a really tough decision. I struggled with it because it didn't feel quite in alignment um, still, but I made the best of it. And it also gave me an excuse to do a year long research project in the in the dance battle scene of London. So I did basic, basically an ethnography. I don't know if people know that term or not, but Anyways, it's a it. cultural yeah. study. Yeah. 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 Okay. And cool. so it just gave me an excuse to attend all these different events. And I, again, it just was fortifying this idea of like the power of dance, the power of dance. How can I harness it? You know, this is what, this is like what I want to do. I want to support people, artists doing this powerful act and offering yeah. it to the world. And so uh, as I was doing all of this work in school and in life, um, it was just like kind of all of these like gray bits that were in my head of like what I wanted to do were coming together, yeah. but I had to like live throughout this whole process. Oh, and another thing that I wanted to add that kind of was another clarifying thing for me on my windy journey was um, when I was finishing up my master's program, I also had the opportunity to debut a experimental dance festival. So I produced my first um, international dance um, production basically abroad in London. Um, and that was also amazing too, because then I, now I saw like, oh, platforms for dance is also a way to like showcase the power of art. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of little bits, but it all was like necessary 
yes. to like finally synergize together. And granted, nothing is super clear still because I'm still in yes. shifting, but yeah. that's the process. I love that. Thank you for that very high level. Yeah, that high level, high mm-hmm. level overview. And I want to I want to dive yeah. into a few things there. But just as we as we do, just to kind of think about your your the work that we did together again in that that transition. How do you articulate maybe the the transformation that happened through that work, the work that we did, like the before, the Emmy before and the uh-huh. Emmy after, even though, and, and, and not necessarily the Emmy today versus the Emmy before, right. but, but like, mm-hmm. you know, what, what came out of that? And I'm, I'm curious how you, how you put words around that, that transition, that, that portion mm-hmm. of the journey. Yeah. I mean, I think in the most simplest terms, it like gave me permission to dig deeper into something mm-hmm. that I loved so much, but like societally, like, oh, it's just a hobby. Oh, yeah. it's, you know, whatever. You just do it yeah. on the side. Yeah. Is, things like aren't valued as much. But it gave yes. me permission to to be like, no, like, wh- why am I drawn to this? And what is this mm-hmm. connection that I have with my buddy? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That is more than just a hobby, right? Yeah, yeah totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I have no idea what dance science means. <laughs> You are not the only one, my friend. (laughs) It's yeah, honestly, it is still a new field, just like any other science. It's just the study of whatever it's studying. So like, just like biology or physics, right? But dance science was created about maybe 20 years ago. Um, I think honestly, the school that I went to in London um, was one of the pioneers that created dance science and offers it as a master's and a bachelor's. And there's only a few schools in the US that kind of touch base with it, but don't have it as a full program. Um, so it's a totally new field, but basically it's going to become its own self as the more that research is done in the field, whether it be in the harder sciences or the softer sciences, like the ones that I did, like cultural studies. But yeah, there's so much to be learned and gained from dancers as a, as an art form, as a culture. So, so yeah. TBD cool. on dance science, but hopefully that gave you a rough idea. Yeah, no, that that <laughs> helps. That helps a lot. I love it. Yeah. I, and I, I know that there's so. It feels like there's so much um, emerging around the body and like yes. the um, how the body and the mind work together. How the body, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think of the the book, you know, the body keeps score, and like you know yes. how about, you know, how trauma is held, and and so like I think dance. You know, I don't know how much of this has been a part of your your studies, but like how dance can unlock, you know, unlock things for people emotionally. And like, it's crazy and wild. And like, I get goosebumps. I have goosebumps right now talking about it. It's just like so, so cool. It, like mm-hmm. the, the hum, human beings are amazing. Um, and we oh and it's, it's amazing that like as much as we know, as advanced as we are, that we can like, you know, send people to the moon and we're working on sending people to Mars and we still don't understand like the, this thing that we live in. Yeah. Like, yeah. This, yeah, which is wild. It's crazy. And I think like with dance in particular, like it's so rudimentary, like everybody's mm-hmm. a mover in na- yeah. by nature. And so it is, it, it does feel like, oh, we, everybody just does it. It's fine. Like it's easy to do. Yeah. You don't need equipment or anything supplementary besides music really. But like, yeah, it's just, it, it I feel like <laughs> dance is kind of like the, the youngest child of the whole like, uh, economy of like artists I suppose yeah. like there's the fine mm-hmm. artists the painters the designers the musicians yeah. like that's a big one right but then like dance yeah. is just kind of like oh, to the side totally because like it, you need something else to exist as a dancer and everybody dances anyway and it's super social sometimes so people don't take it if people take it for granted basically yeah um so yeah I, I think like I feel like I like to be a mouthpiece yeah. for it <laughs> I, well, I, I'm, I'm with you on that, as, even as a non-dancer. And I feel like it's a part mm-hmm. of, I don't know, um, how uh, Western white culture, like, mm. doesn't yeah. dance, right? But, like, so many yeah. other cultures do. And, yeah. um, like, dance was, was, you know, many of the most ancient cultures, you know, dance is a big part of them, of, of mm-hmm. how they express and how they... Yeah. Uh, yeah, a ritual and like, you know, yeah. how they mark, you know, transitions and like all those things. And, and um, so I think there's a lot to be gained from, from yeah. what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you said that. Cause that's, yeah, yeah those are also huge things to, to focus on too. Just yeah. The, yeah. the impact of it culturally, societally. Yeah. Oh. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> one other thing that, you know, I, I, have a, I have a small idea of what you mean when you say this, but you, you did just in passing, just say, you know, that you were studying the dance battle scene of London. Yes. And um, <laughs> I just feel like uh-huh. we can't, I just can't let that go by without talking about, about, okay. about the dance, the dance battle scene. Like, yeah. what, can you describe that? Can you describe that for folks? What, what are you talking oh. about when you talk about the dance battle scene? <laughs> so, yeah. So the dance battle scene basically was evolved um, from different, dance genres um probably circa 1970s 1980s like really like hip-hop was kind of the the biggest spotlight um biggest genre that was spotlighted but like with the birth of hip-hop you know it was a social street dance um and so the way that they did it back then was you know breakers b-boys would get together and they would kind of be like calling each other out and they'd be dancing at each other right proving their worth, like very, so there's so much lineage too behind this movement. Obviously hip hop movement has goes farther back than the seventies and eighties, but that's kind of like the beginnings of it. But with that said, there's also lesser aggressive forms of like battles, we'll say um, that took place with other styles, like, you know, house and like, um, like the the whole ballroom culture as well, like whacking and Mm, voguing those femme movements. Um, And so all of that is really just kind of the same type of, uh, what's the word, same type of format where there's like a cipher, right? A circular space that allows people to come into and exchange. And we can use the word battle because that's kind of like the history of it, the origins. But like, you know, it's it's not like we're like, it's do or die in there. Yeah, and you're You're not necessarily... Well, well, I should ask, do you declare a winner? Is there a winner in a, in in a dance battle? Yes. So nowadays, like most of the time, these battles that happen, like always ends up with a cash prize. So the winner, you know, will take the cash prize or whatever prize is offered, but mostly it's cash. Um, And so the, the format usually is, you know, the winner is determined by judges. So people who are selected because of their expertise or their reputation in the, in the scene as, Mm. you know, specialists. And uh, yeah, one one or sometimes pairs compete or teams compete. Um, it I all varies, it. but yeah, there's definitely a winner. <laughs> you can't go home without so, somebody being declared one. I love that. <laughs> and, and I mean, like for listeners, like would a good equivalent be like MMA but dancing? Oh, that's really like a a, a funny analogy, but yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah, because you're like. You're paired with people and you knock in them a out, circle. KO. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, the circle. Yeah, the circle. That's a yeah, yeah. We could say I that. It. I love it. Well, I, I, I've watched a few videos you know, years ago, but at your prompting, just sort of like, what is this oh. thing that, that Emmy's doing? And and I forget who it is. Yeah, there's like a Seattle group that um that you're you were a big fan of. That, mm. um, yeah. Something monkeys or the massive uh, monkeys. Yes, Shout yes out. massive monkeys. Yes, I've, yes. I've watched. I've watched a few massive monkey videos. So I, I've got a yeah. you know, I've got a little bit of a. It's, it's incredible, really incredible. I would love to. I would love yeah. to see it live because just the energy. It's just. Yeah, I'm oh sure gosh. it's just next level. Um, yes, so. Dan, you should definitely take your children. I'm actually battling this weekend with a partner. Are you so really doing a two v two battle? So wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> it just I just had this it just feels like a video game when you put it like that you know yeah. <laughs> like it feels like Street yeah. Fighter or something you know? yeah D- dating Level myself up. with that with that reference yeah <laughs> um, so great so great well okay so let's 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 kind of circle back to your so thank you for all of that you know, the, all that yes. education on on um, yes. on dance <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to circle back to your work and so you know coming out of you know getting getting your your degree and then just kind of mm-hmm. connect connect the dots to to what you're doing now as far as coaching and like what is like and and maybe just more i just want to know more about like your process and, and you know maybe even tell some mm-hmm. client stories or like how how are you helping mm-hmm. people and what is that transformation mm-hmm. that you're helping people walk through what does that look like i want to hear all of that so let's start with <laughs> uh, let's start with you got your masters and then what uh-huh so yeah, after I got my master, the first thing I did was move back to America and have a baby. <laughs> so that that whole process kind of derailed the process that I had in my mind was going to happen, right? Um, but no, I, I love my son, obviously. Um, and that yeah. was definitely a life goal of mine to be a parent. Um, yeah. But yeah, honestly, the same time that that happened, COVID hit. And so like, wow. 
everything in the arts world was basically like the first to get chopped. Right. So that yeah. momentum just kind of Ugh. fizzled for me, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I like moved back in with my parents for a bit because my husband lost his job from the COVID affecting his industry. And um, yes, yeah, so I was really like, grasping at things at that point mm. where I was like, what mm. am I doing? I was in North Dakota. There's like nothing cultural there yeah. <laughs> really. Um, and so yeah, being back with my parents, that, that's obviously a whole nother thing too. Um, so it was like, I, I was like so desperate to be doing things. Um, which, so my life actually took a crazy turn. Um, my husband and I have always been big dreamers and thinkers and we've talked about real estate for a long time. Um, and so I attended a conference and I basically joined a program to get my real estate education. Um, and I ended up getting my license, um, my real realtor license, but honestly, like I'm not, I'm not doing anything with real estate at the moment. Um, but my husband and I started an investment company, um, basically just like positioning ourselves to be ready to do big things with real estate. But I did make a decision. Basically real estate was like, in my head, I rationalized it as that was going to be my means to my end, which is like my real thing that I want to do is around dance. Yeah. And so I was thinking like, oh, I could fund it with real estate. Mm -hmm. But I basically said, forget it. <laughs> I'm going to do <laughs> dance first and then I'll do yes. real estate later. So that was a big um, decision. And it was kind of jarring for my husband honestly so mm. if he listens to this podcast sorry <laughs> but he knows we've had many discussions about it yeah. um but yeah that was a decision also that i needed to make for myself yeah. um that was like a, a defining moment that i was like no i'm gonna just go for the thing that i really want to do first and then yes figure everything out later yes wow i love yeah. i love that i mean all all of it both from like it makes like <laughs> I can relate in so many ways because uh, it's even mm -hmm. what I've done with, with the meaning movement. Like I have other projects that like meaning movement has, mm -hmm. has yet to be my full-time income. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're working on that, but, but at mm -hmm. the same time, like, um, but there also comes a point where it's like, okay, am I sacrificing too much for, you know, yeah. too much of my, of what I really want to do to be, you know, responsible or, you know, practical. And like, mm -hmm. that's, a, it's such a personal choice. Whereas like, if you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm doing real estate and then doing, I'm doing dance on the side. Like no one, no one would judge you. Right. Like, yeah. like that's a totally valid path and, and makes, it makes a ton of sense. And so yeah. many, I think so many listeners are in spaces like that where they're like, I have my job, I have my thing that makes money, but then I have this mm -hmm. other thing. And like, is it okay that I have two things that, do, mm -hmm. should they be separate do i need to quit one do i need to quit the other you know all of those questions so just i really appreciate you just sharing that and that you know and also where you've where you've landed on it and i'm just like here rooting for you saying go i mean go 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 <laughs> yeah for real though because i don't think it's it's uncommon to like always yeah. choose the rational one that makes sense and, and like you rationalize as like oh this is the, the secure option yes because yes. data has already proven that it works Yes. Like real estate works. That's a formula. Yes. Many people yes. have done it, but like me being an entrepreneur in the arts, uh, not so much, yeah. not much data mm. behind it. Super risky. Yeah. 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 So let's, I'd love to just talk about like, what does that, what, like, what does that look like? Where, are you, what are your, what are you, what are you chasing after? How is this, how is this coming, like coming into focus for you? Yeah. So basically I, I'm, still pretty early days in the work that I'm doing because there's just so much more hurdles to overcome. So even though I made a decision to go forward on my dance goals and my dance dreams, I, I still was to, you know, trying to play it safe. And so when we first moved down to Texas, it, it's been, it was about a year ago, I was still working part time, you know, and I realized that that was really draining my energy from the things that I wanted to do that I already said, Hey, I'm going to do this thing. And so I quit my job. Thank you, husband for being so patient with me <laughs> again. <laughs> but yeah, I quit my job. And I was like, Okay, I'm just gonna go all in. And so the first, um, yeah, debut of me in my coaching business was just putting myself out there being like, this is what I do. Yes. And that was scary to uh -huh. just like own it fully and yeah. to just like t 
take those first steps because again, like I, you know, I didn't know anybody that was doing anything like this in, in the um, creative sector, let alone the dance sector. Um, And so, yeah, I was just like, okay, I got to figure this out myself. So I honestly needed to rely on a lot of other influences, uh, mentors, coaches. I hired my own to be able to help me really clarify what I was doing because like I knew I had an idea of how, okay, I wanted to support other artists in doing the transformational work that they do through art. And how do I do that? I don't know. So yeah, I really needed to, to rely on other people to, to help me. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Um, and, and so like, what does that, what does it, what does it look like? I mean, I know you mentioned a little bit about, you know, helping freelance dancers, you know, make Mm -hmm. their, make their living or, you know, Mm -hmm. make, earn more as a dancer. Mm -hmm. Like, so I guess maybe what is the, what is the transformation that you're, you're, walking people through like what is what is the before and after of of the work that you do with people yeah so traditionally like dancers are trained technicians right with all of the systems all the structure all the society like how how we're all raised as dancers like we just are raised as technicians if we go through the standard path and so there's no real resources and thinking beyond of of you as a dancer, but really all dancers are entrepreneurs. We're all representing ourselves. We're all making a means from our art. And so that mindset shift (laughs) needs to be like ingrained. And so that's, that's one part of the transformation, just really being like, oh my gosh, like it's, it's my destiny to be an entrepreneur. So latching onto that. And then I also take so when I do my work with my clients, like I take them through this process of developing a business that is, you know, makes them light up because dancers, honestly, like it's not the only thing we do. We have so many other interests. And so it's about finding something that connects all of your creative energies and creating a product or a service to offer the world to be able to make money from it. And so we kind of go through this process of digging in a little bit deeper to figure out what this business can look like and then who you want to serve and what you actually do want to offer, you know, if everything's in alignment. And then we can start taking steps to making your business happen and actually debuting it like I did when I was like, I'm a coach. (laughs) Yes, yes. You know? Yeah. So so it's a lot of mindset work, but there are some practical steps for sure. Yeah. In well, the mindset is so so important and i feel like that's yeah. like t- every every single episode it feels like of, of this show like i'm just always and mm. it's part of it's just because that's you know so much where i'm at in my own process of like yeah. just realizing how much the way we think about who we are and the work that we do yeah. shapes you know, it shapes our reality our thoughts shape our reality the words we use to describe ourselves and our work and what we're up to in life shapes you know what what comes out of it and so it makes yeah. a ton of sense yeah, I love. Totally. And I also just love how how specific your work is. Like that, like just niche ha- having an, a, such a clear niche audience, right? A mm-hmm. niche client, a very specific mm-hmm. client. I'm sure it's kind of scary. It's like, are yeah. there enough dancers that want something like this? But also, like because you're saying you're you're working with just this very specific demographic, it just means like when mm-hmm. those people find you, they're like, heck yes, this is my this is my girl. Um, <laughs> yep. So <laughs> that's I my plan. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that so, so, so much. So, in addition to coaching, I know you're also you know, a creator. You're a dancer. You're doing all kinds of other things. Like maybe just fill out some of the picture of what else. What else is going on in in Emmy's creative world? Yeah, I mean, besides my business, I am actively dancing. I'm actually on a hip hop dance crew right now. We um, compete. Uh, we will be competing in the spring, so that's like an awesome outlet for me to just continue my own training. Um, and then, additionally, I also have creative projects that I am producing and creating, and I'm very much the organizer of. So coming up, I've partnered with a nonprofit that has a showcase. Um, The theme is very collaborative. They're um, making bridges between artistic disciplines. So I'm creating a performance around this theme where we're basically looking at a conversation between a moving body, a dancer, and a live painter. Um, Mm -hmm. And then so that'll be debuted in the fall in Dallas and Houston. And then also in the spring, um, the event that I did um, in London that I produced in my last year of my master's program, that is the event that I want to bring here to the U.S. 
I'm going to be debuting it in Dallas and Houston as well um, in the spring. So 2023 is a big year and I'm very excited. Big year. So cool. Mm-hmm. So fun to see you out there making making magic happen. I love it. Yes. <laughs> just to zoom out a little bit, mm-hmm. I want to just ask, um, you know, kind of about, I don't know which words you use in in your thinking about your work, um, legacy, calling, vocation, mm. passion, but um, I'm curious what what words are in your vernacular and um, how how do you think about that aspect of what you do? Oh man, it's like always on my mind because I th- I think I had described before about like how as a creative you just have so many different energies and so many different like inspirations like we're just divine channels of open inspiration all the time we're always being inspired and so yeah. like so it is easy to like get distracted by things but when I come back to like my mission I guess sometimes I use that word yeah, or my purpose or my um yeah the thing that lights me up when I yeah. come back to it I realize that all of the movement in these different directions are still under this beautiful umbrella that I've created for myself mm. and so it's okay it's okay I'm just yeah. harnessing my creativity in a different way but yeah, my that. mission overall is really just to be a world changer. Oh, it sounds so mm. trite. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, like, because it's been used a lot. But it yeah. really is about me serving my community to be a thought leader, to shake people up and say, hey, you have so much value in the art. Like art mm. is powerful. Mm. And I don't think people realize that, especially the yeah. ones that create it. And we take it for granted every day, you know, just listening to music and stuff. But like that stuff is getting hit in deep levels in people and movements are created from art, you know, social movements, all of these things. They're from like new thoughts, which are instigated by art. Um, And so really it's just like shaking my community, be like, wake up, do this thing. And because the artists are kind of the pioneers of change, like that's what I envision as like my legacy as art creating positive changes that impact their local communities, which impact the global communities because we're also interconnected nowadays. So it's just a matter of time that once we all realize this power and harness it as artists, um, yeah, it's, you know, only good things can come from this. I love that. That's beautiful. What a great mission. And mission is such a, is such a good word. I'm happy to happy that you, that you use that. And I think, I mean, one of the things that, uh, that folks listening can really take from that. I think that you just articulate so well is how, um, how it's a, it's an umbrella, like mm-hmm. with all these, all the, like where you nest all these other activities underneath it. And I think that we mm-hmm. often think about things like mission or, you know, a dream job or calling yeah. or like whatever words, like as a, like as a job or like one specific, you know, outlet. Yeah. Um, when really it's like a, it's a life direction. It's a, um, it's a, it's a movement um, in the world that you want to be a part of. Um, it's an impact that you want to make. And so I feel like you've articulated that really, really beautifully in your work. And um, again, I'm just, I'm just rooting for you. I'm a big fan. It's so great. Thank you. It's so great. <laughs> Thank you so um, much. For folks that are listening that, you know, maybe they're in a spot, maybe similar to where, you know, you were when we first met feeling stuck, feeling like things were falling apart. And I know you, you kind of mentioned it in passing, but you know, at that point in your life, you'd um, just gone through a divorce and it was like, felt like, I don't know, it, it felt like you, you, you weren't really certain what, what was next. Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious if you have any words to offer folks that are in a space like that right now. Oof. Yeah. So basically if I had to talk to my 27 year old yeah. self, there you go. Uh huh. Yeah, I would just say stick with it. Like, Mm. you know, dig in a little bit deeper to what lights you up. Figure out the story behind it and figure out how you can tap into it more to really create a life around this thing because it it has you and there's a reason for it. So if you Mm. dig in and learn more, then the possibilities are only going to open up. Yeah. So that's beautiful. yeah. Yeah. And just as you're saying that, just I don't know, came to mind some of some of your stories of dance and just how, um, yeah, meaningful and special. And and uh, I don't know, it feels like 
sacred sacred moments, you know, to be able to share yeah. some of those stories that, that we got to share. And so again, I just feel so grateful for for the work that we got to do together in, in yeah. naming some of that as um as important um for you. Oh, man. So yeah. So good. Yeah. So good. Thank you. Well, for folks that want to follow along with your work, oh. um, is there anything you know, that you'd like to invite people to? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I definitely, you know, in the greater scale, I just want everybody to like live authentically and be, you know, themselves. So if my yes. story and the work that I do helps you just a little bit, just gives you yes. a little pep talk, then feel free to, you know, follow me on my social account. Um, obviously, you know, my niche is dancers, so I'm always going to be talking to them. But, you know, yeah. obviously as well, there's there's more to be gleaned from just the messages yeah. that I have out there. But my Instagram is leveling up underscore Emmy Lou. I love putting video content out. So at least it can give you a little chuckle if you follow me. Um, and yeah, <laughs> my website is emmylou.co. So dot co, not com, not the com. So um, yeah, yeah. And honestly, like, I am still shifting. I'll be, you know, full disclosure to everybody listening, like this path of entrepreneurship is always shifting, always trying to find the thing that fits and is in alignment with me. So it, luckily, websites and technology can can accommodate those changes. Shift so definitely. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. So Keep updated on all of my shifts in my journey yes. uh, through my socials and my website. So, yeah. I love it. Well, <laughs> I'll that. I'll make sure to, to link up to those in the in the show notes. And I think you know, again, I feel like I've already said this, but like, just that you know, I love how transparent you are about you know about your process, about where you are in your process, and just like just. You know, yeah. Why pretend like you have it all together, right? We're already yeah. telling stories that everyone else in the world has it together and we don't. When the truth is nobody mm -hmm. nobody has it together and everybody's making it up as they go along. So thank you for just being an example of, um, yeah. of you know, that that's the reality, that that's the reality of life. Yes. And I find that to be really inspiring. And so yeah. this has been so fun, so fun to reconnect, so fun to <laughs> just, know. you know, hear so much more of your story over the last, you know, so many years since the last time we connected. And, um, and also I think just, I think your story is just an inspiration for folks um, who, you know, are in similar transi transitions. So thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Dan. And I honestly, Dan, the work that you do, I, I hope that you make it full time very soon because I it's been so impactful for me just hearing other people's stories on the podcast. It's really given me the juice to keep going, knowing that other people are out there doing the same things, you know, making big strides, taking chances on their life. Yes. And just hearing that and being a part of this community yeah. has been really, really valuable to you. So oh. I hope that you expand it and it keeps Thank you. growing. Thank you. That means so much to hear because uh, you put these podcasts out there and you just don't know. You don't know who's consuming it at what point in their lives. And like you don't get you don't get a lot of feedback. And so. Um, yeah. So thank you for that. That means a lot to you. Yes. Yes. I love it. Yes. Yeah, so keep going. OK. <laughs> keep going. I will. I will. <laughs> Thanks so much, Emmy. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Dan. Thank you so much, Emmy. And thank you, listeners and viewers, for watching and listening. If you're on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. If you're listening, hit that subscribe button wherever you are listening. You can find links to Emmy's work at themeaningmovement.com slash Emmy, E-M-I. That's where our show notes for this episode live, themeaningmovement.com slash Emmy. While you're there, jump on the email list. If you are a high performer looking to have a clear path to reclaim your life, your work, and your relationships, again, The Meaning Movement is for you. Every week, I send out resources and trainings, all kinds of good stuff to help you do exactly that. So get on the email list if you're not there already. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. We'll be back with you in just a few days. Our artwork is by Eliezer Ruiz. Our music is by Tom Morum. We'll be back with you soon. Thanks.